hour and a half, and we are now resuming our agenda. And the second item on the agenda is Order 18-48, Act on the Request to Ratify the Collective Bargaining Agreement between the Town of Scarborough and the Scarborough Police Benevolent Association. And I would ask uh, the Town Manager to begin the introduction of this matter. Yes, uh, this matter is uh, relevant to a three-year contract with the police union. Uh, we had the occasion to brief the council on the particulars of the, the contract and the strategy associated with the town's position on the matter. And certainly are pleased to address the council's question if you have them. Uh, would you like some sort of overview for public benefit? Be Please. Honest. I may defer to the um, human resources director to provide an overview of the terms. And then I'm sure either he or I could field questions if you have any. Good evening, uh, members of the, the town council. Uh, as the town manager uh, introduced this item, it is a three proposed three-year agreement with the uh, police union. Um, this was a uh, the draft agreement includes a, a number of uh, changes to the three key economic items uh, typically covered by collective bargaining agreements. Uh, that are uh, medical insurance, wages, and retirement. Um, the, the, I guess I would like to uh, start by framing, uh, framing this package in front of you uh, with some context as far as the, the marketplace goes for uh, law enforcement. Um, as I outlined in, in my memorandum to the council, um, law enforcement officers are, are currently at a premium. In, in the state of Maine and all over the country, uh, not least of which it's, it's not a desirable job to do. Uh, many people coming out of school, the last thing they want to do is, is work overnights and deal with uh, some of the more challenging aspects of the population. Um, so that coupled with um, you know, traditionally lower wages, albeit generous uh, benefits, just isn't as attractive in the current climate uh, and fairly strong economy. So. Uh, what this, what we've sought to do with this proposed agreement is um, address some of our initiatives at the onset, uh, respond to some of the proposals brought forward by the union, and uh, come to an agreement on a wage package that we think is uh, strategically positioned to uh, address some of the vulnerabilities we feel we have in our, our package to attract and retain the best qualified officers. Um, so just a high-level overview, uh, our objective with regard to medical insurance was certainly to achieve some uh, budgetary savings over the course of the agreement. Uh, we also sought to gain participation from every level of coverage uh, so that the current agreement in place, soon to be expired agreement, uh, provides uh, coverage at no cost to those enrolled in single coverage. We sought to change that and gain some level of participation there. Um, and also, uh, further incentivize employees to consider some, some lower cost options. Um, the agreement we ultimately came to uh, requires us to fix our costs at a lower cost plan, um, allowing employees to essentially buy up to, to the more generous plan. So by way of that, we're, we're preserving plan options and current plan offerings, but achieving some savings uh, to the town and uh, gaining participation at the single level so everyone has a, a participation in their, in their coverage. Um, the change to uh, retirement uh, is a change for those enrolled in the Main State Retirement Plan. About uh, a little over 60% of our uh, unit members are enrolled in this plan, uh, and they propose to switch from a 20-year no-age retirement plan to a 25-year no-age retirement plan. Uh, that change requires uh, uh, increased employee participation by way of contribution, uh, and it actually decreases the employer contribution to the plan. So that was uh, certainly a, a proposal we were keenly interested in. Um, to facilitate that change, we've, we've returned some of the savings through the town to a, an additional contribution to another retirement vehicle, um, but overall that generates savings uh, again, roughly $65,000 over the, the course of the contract. Um, with regard to wages, we uh, did some, some level of research at the onset and found that while well, at the top end of the scale we, we offered uh, very competitive wages, 
the lower end of the scale produce some vulnerabilities as far as the uh, attracting new officers and retaining staff. So we found we were a little bit below uh, the average and certainly the high end of, of comparable communities. Uh, so the mechanism that we've, we've utilized in this contract is to uh, essentially uh, provide consistent wage adjustments across every step of the scale. Uh, so in year one of the contract, essentially every step, whether you're step one or step 11, whether you've been here one year or 30 years, will receive the same dollar increase. Uh, what that does is essentially the, the percentage equation uh, is increased the lower you're paid, and the higher end uh, of the scale receives a lower percentage increase. Um, and we, we continued that trend through four different wage adjustments over the three-year agreement. Um, what the memorandum reflects is, is uh, or calls for is a 10.5% cost, of, again, what we call a cost of living adjustment. Uh, it's essentially the, the adjustment to the pay scale. Um, but that's, uh, that's not an accurate figure. It's effectively less than that once you factor in current uh, enrollment, the current census, and, and uh, what the, the true impact is. Um, Again, it was a creative solution to, to what we identified as a, as a, a weakness in our, our wage and benefit package. Um, I guess the, the other point of context I would ask the, the council to consider as they evaluate uh, the approval of this agreement uh, is to, to look at what um, comparable agreements have provided as far as uh, adjustments to insurance, retirement, and wages. Um, providing that analysis uh, at a, at a 2.5% cost of living adjustment per year for a three-year agreement, uh, this uh, very complex uh, proposal in front of you will cost essentially $9,000 more than what a standard agreement provided 2.5% wage adjustments uh, over three years and no other changes would, would cost. So uh, when we're looking at 37 officers, uh, and, a, and a total, you know, a total budget in the millions of dollars, nine thousand dollars over a three-year agreement is a fairly nominal sum. Um, so while there's lots of complexities that we spent some time discussing, I, I think maybe that's my my introduction to this, and I'm happy to take any questions from the town council. Yeah, so, so we did a, a fair amount of discussion and analysis. <coughs> One of the the questions I forgot to ask was when you were looking at benefit savings, you were including that that two percent. So that was a that we were giving back to the. That's correct. Yep. So when when uh, the the roughly sixty again approximately sixty five thousand dollars in retirement savings over this course of the agreement did include that additional two percent contribution. That we were making the contribution we were making. So it was, right. it was not overlooked. <coughs> yep. That's right. Tell us you, I was sorry. wondering, Mr. Gallagher, can you um, also describe the non monetary um, request because there were yeah. several. Um, Smaller items that are beneficial as well. Yep. So, uh, and I apologize for that. So, the uh, the other items in there, uh, there was a request to clarify under uh, the retirement article, which we actually ended up including in, in the medical insurance article, was that when employees reach their uh, their retiree eligibility under their um, whatever retirement plan they're enrolled in, they could continue on medical insurance in retirement under the current on the town's uh, plan. That's already provided under the health trust that we belong to, as long as we are part of the health trust. That's not uh, a retirement plan that the town subsidizes, is 100% employee paid. So they are seeking clarification and language to that, to that end. <coughs> the other change was they saw an increase, and we've agreed to an increase in personal time each year from 16 hours to 32 hours uh, to match our dispatch agreement. Um, so I think that those were the other two not yep. necessarily monetary items. Thank you. Yes. Other questions? Uh, we'll just go right down the line. Councilor Gettery. Uh Yes. Mr. Gallagher, could you explain um, how this contract will line up with other contracts that we have for similar types of positions in this? So we have uh, three collective bargaining groups in town. We have a fire group that uh, ratified an agreement last year. Uh, that included a slightly different wage package. Certainly it wasn't the uh, as targeted and strategic as, as this package. It was a more of a, a standard cost of living adjustment applied to every step of the scale. Um, they have two more years on that agreement. They also came to a, a different agreement on medical insurance, which we may revisit. Um, and then we have one other contract that's due to expire. Uh, we expect to put an offer on the table for that group in short order. Um, that's our dispatch unit, which has mm -hmm. 14 employees. 
Uh, I think that if we can find our way to some uh, consensus on uh, medical insurance, which would be you know, really the item here that stands out and, and has the opportunity for equity across various employee groups, uh, we will look to extend that same package to our non-bargaining folks as well. Can I try to follow yes. up with that? So uh, by, if we were to ratify this particular contract, what you've been able to negotiate would give us some, I don't know if I want to use the standing, but some backing to then go forward with the dispatchers or whatever and, and saying this is what we were doing and trying to get that medical uh, insurance. Because uh, that I know that's, that's, the, that's the biggest uh, potential monkey wrench in the system as far as I can see, our medical insurance costs. That's just a huge driver in business today and whatever and anything we, we can do to uh, ameliorate our, our exposure as the employer would be helpful, so. Yeah, I think that certainly, again, we'll be respectful of, of each collective bargaining process, uh, but I do think that uh, equity, again, equity is a good policy to, to pursue. And I think uh, if in the event we have uh, multiple groups on the same program, extending that to the balance of the groups, I think it's a, a worthwhile uh, initiative. Thank you. Yeah. Council Hayes. Yeah, really question through the chair, or maybe William, is just, can you give us a little bit of a timeline where we all find ourselves here this evening yeah. on a summer night and kind of people are wandering <laughs> through the channels at home, they may be surprised. Just give us a little bit of timeline of why we're here and why we have scheduled this and the importance of, of what we're doing tonight. Yeah, and, and I think that's a, a fair critique. Uh, and not that you, maybe you were going that far, but I think that there is a fair critique to be made that uh, this is not typically how we like to, to do business and bring forward uh, agreements. Um, we we began uh, negotiations midway through May, um, and uh, there was a, a fairly healthy back and forth on some of the finer details of the agreement through the last week. Uh, the the urgency behind uh, the council's consideration of this agreement is really tied to the uh, the retirement change. Uh, it's a change that, again, we forecast some um, uh, uh, relatively significant savings, uh, and it's a change that can only be made on a fiscal or calendar year basis. So uh, in the event this agreement is not ratified this evening, uh, we would have to wait until January 1st to make that change, and as it's a an item brought forward by the union that may have an impact on some of the other items that we've come to a tentative agreement on. So um, to, to echo the town manager's uh, initial insight, I think that we really felt like we had an obligation to, to advance this, this tentative agreement to the council for uh, discussion and, and find out whether that's a worthwhile proposition and, and whether there's a comfort level on such short notice. Um, and, we, and, and we'd be remiss if we didn't do that. Um, so that's really, the, the rationale behind such an expedited timeline. Again, it's not one that uh, I would have any comfort level becoming a trend or pattern, um, and, and certainly should not become an expectation of this council to receive and evaluate uh, collective bargaining agreements. Thank you. Chris. Um, you could, could you describe the nature of the negotiations in terms of were they, uh, you know, um, amiable, amicable, and, and maybe a little bit of history, too, of the, uh, the nature of the relationships between the, the town and the, uh, the union organization? Sure. Uh, so, th so I think that uh, we, we met uh, for, th for three or four different sessions. Uh, again, I, I think it's a, they're amicable discussions. I think that they're, um, you know, I think, that w I think there's a high degree of respect on both sides, uh, not to say that we're all um, laughing and, and patting each other on the back because I think that there were some, again, there were some uh, changes to fundamental benefits and, and compensation, which, um, you know, when we're talking to law enforcement officers, this is their livelihoods. So, um, you know, this town does have a, uh, you know, does have a very uh, positive history of labor relations. I think that that has yielded uh, benefits that mm. maybe at times are hard to quantify, uh, but uh, I think that, that that positive working relationship between the, the union and between administration <coughs> and town administration, I think allows us to pursue a lot of the initiatives that we're able to pursue. Uh, you know, we don't have uh, members of our command staff bogged down with uh, endless grievances. 
uh, I think that that allows them to focus on other things like some of our strategic in initiatives around uh, <coughs> Operation Hope and things like that. Um, and so, again, I think that those things at times are, are tough to put in a spreadsheet, as we say, uh, but certainly are, are valuable and should not go unnoticed. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah, Dr. I was, Rowan. I was just wondering, and you may not be prepared to, to answer, but could you speak at all to um, just kind of the, this type of collective bargaining agreement in general, and, and um, typically it has both the cost of living increase and a step function. Could you just talk at all about kind of the wisdom and the thinking behind such structures and, yeah. and, the common, and how common that is. Yeah, so uh, in the public sector, you know, specifically, um, and I think probably, and again, Maine doesn't have a lot of large employers, but I, I would expect that this would probably be true with some larger employers. Uh, they really have seniority-based pay systems and structures um, where uh, time and grade is what advances you pay-wise. Uh, cost of living adjustments, theoretically, are intended to keep up with inflation so that people don't go backwards. Um, you know, again, the, this, this COLA cost of living adjustment package in this agreement is certainly above inflation. Again, say nothing of the complexity of what we've actually done with the flat rate adjustments. Um, but the, the rationale is that your, your compensation advances with your time and grade and your seniority, and the cost of living adjustments ensures so that you don't go backwards. Um, the tangible impact of that is that um, people don't just receive with a, with a step in grade system. They don't just receive that you know a, a cola as the only adjustment. Um, they may get a step, and again, the the frequency of steps are all can vary. Um, you know, sometimes you don't get a step, but once every five years. Other times you can get a step every year. Uh, the percentages between step increases can vary a great deal, um, but those are all. Uh, that, that's sort of the rationale that's very common in school departments and teacher contracts and support staff contracts. Anytime, um, you know, you don't have a merit-based pay system. Um, you know, I'm happy to, again, just step one step outside of the police contract. You know, the non-bargaining folks do have a, a merit-based pay component to their, their system. So um, that's not something that we're ready to advance with this group yet, uh, but perhaps there's an appetite in the future to consider something uh, in that same vein. Other questions? Uh, uh, just a couple of things that, that were brought to light uh, in the earlier session. The, uh, uh, apparently, there were fewer issues on the table that the opportunity to expedite this discussion from mid-May uh, was partially a result of uh, fewer issues than would potentially be uh, normally on the table. Yeah, I think that, um, to be fair, we really only brought forward uh, one objective, you know, which was some of those uh, meaningful changes to the medical insurance program. Uh, and to, to, be, to give credit where credit's due, I think the union brought forward uh, only the proposals that they thought were uh, significant to them. Um, you know, that's not always the case. Uh, you know, I, I've personally participated in negotiations where, you know, we each, each side has... Uh, proposals that number in the pages, um, and uh, there's a lot of minutia to it. And um, those are oftentimes the collective bargaining agreements that are 50 and 60 pages long, not you know the better part of 14 in this case. So um, yeah, I think that was a reasonable list that they brought forward. They did not achieve everything that they were looking to achieve, not to say it wasn't a credible opening offer. Um, but I think that that, that to your point, that did expedite the process to some degree. Just so the public will realize out there, the Appointments and Negotiations Committee has really taken on a greater role uh, uh, in the last year to look more carefully at uh, and at least provide advice uh, to the negotiating team uh, here led by Liam Gallagher, our HR director. Uh, and we did meet last month. Uh, uh, with the uh, negotiating team to have the benefit of uh, that insight and our comments uh, in turn. Uh, uh, I must thank Liam and the town manager, uh, given the shortness of time uh, that uh, this came to fruition. They voted on Monday for this contract, uh, and uh, July 1st was a triggering date uh, that won't come again until January 1st for the insurance program that they're anxious to have enacted. Um, 
so there's some, uh, some, and some financial benefits for us. Uh, a substantial amount of information has been distributed to the council, uh, which was reviewed in an hour and a half session earlier today. So there was a significant amount of analysis. It's been expedited beyond what we normally do, and we would like to think of this as our summer season where we maybe slowed down, but we didn't really have the opportunity to do that under the circumstances. And we wanted to accommodate the opportunity to uh, consider this contract when uh, the union had come and finally accepted our most recent offer. Uh, thank you, Liam. Uh, Chief uh, Moulton is in the audience, and I'm going to ask him to comment further on uh, uh, his perspective. Sure. I think um, first and foremost, I would say, uh, and I described this earlier in the executive session, but um, we have had a very positive relationship with our union. We uh, we don't have a lot of grievances. Haven't had a grievance, a formal grievance, I don't think, 25 years. Um, we don't have a lot of citizen complaints. We don't spend a lot of time uh, fighting about things. So that's uh, to me, that's worth a lot. And um, and our folks. Uh, yeah, uh, to not this past contract, but the one before that, they actually had uh, locked into a 3% raise and they, uh, and they uh, voluntarily came forward, gave that up for a year uh, when the town was uh, struggling financially. And um, so that, that type of cooperation to me goes a long way. I've thought through this, I think it's, uh, I think it's a fair agreement for both sides. I think. Uh, it, you know, not all the membership was uh, was ready to jump on it. I think, as the as the chairman mentioned, the July 1st was a trigger, and I think that helped uh, to get the vote. Um, and I think it's a fair package. Thank you. Any questions to the chief? Mm -hmm. Thanks, chief. Uh, public comment. Uh, anyone wishing to address this issue, please approach the podium. Seeing none, Mr. Uh, I will uh, recognize Peter Hayes and uh, the town manager for uh, public comments that were sent to us by email. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll read two into the record at uh, the request of the author. The first is from Councillor Katie Foley. Uh, please share my regrets for not being able to attend tonight's meeting. If magically my last appointment of the day cancels or ends early, earlier than expected, I'll make every effort to arrive late. Um, regretfully, I'm, I'm unable to attend tonight's meeting, but wanted to share my thoughts on the evening's agenda. In the context of budget discussions, we talk a lot about ensuring that funding priorities reflect our core values and community priorities. For me, our town's public safety departments rightfully deserve a place near the top of that list. I want to be clear that I first fully support competitive wages and benefits for these departments. My concern is with the expediency uh, in which the contents and need for tonight's meeting was shared. These are contract negotiations that have been in the works for a long time and there should have been, not have been a need for an emergency meeting to be ca called. It's unfair and unrealistic for the town council and public to be given less than 48 hours notice about the special meeting to review and understand the implications of the changes to the contract. The timing is unacceptable. I fear we continue to shoot ourselves in the foot with decisions like this that cause some of the community, some in the community to doubt the integrity of our process and management of their tax dollars. It promotes unnecessarily uh, scrutiny and criticism. With that all said, I support the changes proposed tonight and enthusiastically thank our public safety departments for their service. Regards, Councillor Katie Foley. Secondly, I have uh, communication from Don Hamill. Dear uh, town council members and town manager, I want to express my profound dismay at the council's action to hold a special town council meeting this evening, including an executive session to review and approve the proposed settlement for the Scarborough Police Benevolent Association's collective bargaining agreement. The timing of this is questionable. There is no evidence of any effort by the town to educate or seek input from public on this settlement. Perhaps most troubling of all, we have not seen any detailed analysis of costing and the total financial impact of this commitment. How can this be? There is no chance for any public input prior to the executive session when the approval recommendation will be made. This is an example of last minute ad hoc on the fly decision, which is unsettling to the average uh, citizen. 
I attended four of the list, Listen to Learn sessions for budgeting process, during which the presenters for both the municipal and school sides of the budget lamented the size of the people costs part of the budget and suggested there was little that could be done to control expenses here primarily due to contractual commitments. Labor cost is often referred to as a semi-fixed cost. The town appears to view this as a fixed cost and seems to be writing a blank check to the bargaining unit during this negotiation cycle. We estimate the proposed agreement represents approximately 10.5% wage increase over three years or an increase of over $600,000, not including step increasing increases. This figure is a rough estimate which does not factor in movement of individuals across steps in the wage scale, nor does it include the benefit cost impact of 16 hours of additional personal time off and the rising costs of an extremely generous health insurance package. Other questions include the following. Number one, who negotiated this agreement for the town? Number two, were there any management objectives contemplated or negotiated? For example, work rule changes, flexibility in hiring and assignment, increased benefits, cost sharing by employees. There is no evidence of any of this in the proposed settlement. Did the council or the finance committee have any input in this process prior to now? Three, was there any representation of taxpayer interest at the bargaining table? Four, how does this compare to other town police contract settlements in the area? MMA data should have been used and made available for the public. In the last bargaining cycle, 2015, there was a list of town objectives as well as a reference to the comprehensive wage survey which was used to achieve a more modest increase, 7.5%, as well as health care cost concessions, see attached. Tom Hall mentioned in the recent budget session that he had ideas for cost benefit reductions. Where are they? We have a town ordinance which requires prior authorization by voters for amounts in excess of $300,000 proposed for bonding. The amounts involved in contract negotiations are much larger and have far-reaching impact. Should we not follow a similar effort for review and approval of labor contracts? This is a serious structural obstacle that is preventing us from gaining control of our financial future. The town leadership has failed in its obligation to inform and notify citizens in a timely fashion of contract negotiations, plans, process, progress, and proposed settlement as well as the financial impact and implications. Why can we not get out in front of such major issues like this? Until then, unfortunately, the public's trust and confidence in town leadership will continue to decline. Many thanks, Don Hamill, 3 Bay Street. Thank you. Uh, accept the motion. Move approval. Second. Uh, discussion. Let's start at this end, and I think everyone has some comments. So yeah, we'll um, and I forgot to, uh, thinking that this was going to be an easy night, I did not bring my computer, nor did I bring pen and paper, so hopefully I'll get everything in my head um, out um, in proper order. First, I, I would like to ask the chair, and maybe the manager, some of the information that was provided in that last letter, um, I believe was sent to us as council, is listed as confidential, and I'd like to understand why a citizen would have those details, um, especially given that it's a collective bargaining agreement or uh, negotiations in which until we ratify, we t typically are supposed to keep that confidential amongst the council. So this information had to have been shared by somebody on this council that's not appropriate. I'll ask the uh, town manager to look into that. Yeah. I, I can say that for the public's consumption, we did provide contract highlights that provided some of the basic terms. Um, that's the only thing I could say in response yeah. to that inquiry. Um, I, I just know that the email that we, that we received, it said confidential on it. So. I would be that's why I'm asking. Um, I am in full support of this. When you think about what our public safety officials do, and that includes the fire department and what they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, just outside of the, you know, uh, the dangers of their job as far as their own personal safety and the safety of the citizens, you think about the level of civility or the lack of civility and having the, you know, the right personality to be um, really good at their job. I think that what is being requested has a long-term advantage for this community, even though some of us may be a little bit challenged on the compensation side because it's a little bit above average. But I think if you look at the medical benefits or the, me the change in medical plan as well as the change in the pension plan, it has longer-term longer, longer -term ramifications that's to our benefit. Um, so I am very much in support of this um, and think it's the right move. Thank you. 
Councilor Rowe. Yeah, I, I, I have similar sentiments. I also um, uh, agree with the statement that Councilor Foley made in terms of I wish that we had had more time um, uh, and could have gotten more information out, but that's just, you know, the, the uh, union only voted on uh, Monday, um, so it would have been difficult, and we have a July 1st deadline, so it would have been, um, so I understand where we are. Um, I also feel like uh, the comments that uh, uh, the chief made regarding, um, you know, the professionalism of this union in particular mm. um, is just incre incredible and speaks volumes. And the fact that they showed up um, when the town um, w asked them, or didn't even ask them, showed up when, when they noticed that the town was in trouble and from a fiscal perspective, and gave up a year of raises um, to, um, uh, to, to do their part to help out, I think speaks, speaks volumes in addition to the number of grievances um, that are down. I think it's, it's unfortunate that these large um, uh, labor contracts um, have an inflationary pressure on our, on our property tax, but I, I, I don't, I, it seems to me to be a reflection of these labor contracts everywhere. When you look at police departments, in the area, and uh, the chief in the executive session listed several, and I'm I would um, I'm going to butcher what he told us, but it was South Portland is down five officers, Portland is and Westbrook are down ten to fifteen. The, but uh, we are at full employment. We have all thirty seven officers, is, is my understanding on on staff. Um, but it, when the last time we had an opening in the spring, we only had two applicants. Um, so I, I think that um, we need to be competitive. Um, I think that. We have very high standards here in town, as is reflected by the professionalism of the individuals on the force. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to support this contract tonight. Thank you. Councilor Caterina. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take an unusual move. And, and with the permission of the chair, I'm going to read my response to Mr. Hamill that I sent out earlier today, because I think it will hopefully help to answer for people who heard what he um, wrote here. <clears throat> Thanks for reaching out, Dawn. It is my understanding that collective bargaining is a confidential matter and does not include public input. I believe that is covered under fe federal labor relations law. I could be wrong, but I have never seen the public represented directly at the table in this or any other collective bargaining by public employees. The public is represented by its elected officials and town management. I happen to believe in the ability of our town bargaining representatives to negotiate in good faith in order that all parties to the agreement are satisfied. And just as an aside, I happen to be someone who believes in win-win when it comes to negotiations. As you can imagine, I believe strongly in union representation and the collective bargaining process. I have confidence in this process and feel no need or desire to interfere in that process. As for the so-called rush to meet, the contract expires on June 30th. There is a portion of the suggested negotiation that requires a start date of July 1. This portion is of benefit to the town. Thanks again for expressing your concerns. I hope this helps you understand that at times we need to meet quick, quickly on some matters in order to do our job as the representatives of all of the people of Scarborough Best JMC. Um, as I, I, I want to, again, I, I support um, what's been negotiated here. Um, I think, again, I'm not going to, I think that Will and Sean spoke very uh, eloquently as to the reasons why I feel we should ratify uh, this contract. These are our law enforcement people, folks. These are the uh, gals and the guys who are out there doing the work that personally I don't want to do, but I know darn right well when I get on the phone, because I've had it happen personally, when I've gotten on that phone and I need a police officer, they're there. And they're there to help, and they're there to support us, and they need our support. So I will absolutely support this contract. Thank you, Councilor Hayes. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll kind of echo what's been said. It's it's kind of it's kind of I'm kind of torn in, in several different ways. One, absolutely, <coughs> I spent a night riding in a police cruiser here about mm -hmm. a, uh, late in the fall, and really realized what everybody does. It it's, it it is eye opening. <laughs> um, I will just echo, though, I think, you know, especially with everything that's been going on this summer and, you know, this past season that I, I ju just, you know, as we go forward, I, you know, I think, you know, we talked a little bit tonight about the unusual circumstances why we find ourselves, but I do kind of echo it's important to kind of follow our processes, build in enough time so that the appropriate committees have chances to weigh in on the front end and the back end. They 
appropriate committees can actually bring a recommendation forward. So, you know, some of these deadlines are known, so I just love us going forward to really be aware of what we need to do to be able to execute these things, make sure there's enough time that they fit into our normal schedule so that the public has an opportunity to at least know what's going on. So with that, I'll support it because I do think it's important and it's, it, you know, right now, you know, policing is an incredibly important, public safety is an incredible issue for all of us with all the things going on. So thank you and uh, I'll turn it over to Chris, I guess. Councilor Cayetta. Yeah, um, I, I, again, I won't uh, speak for anybody else on the council. I, I don't believe there were any nefarious issues with bringing this forward the way that was brought forward. I think we, you know, um, to me, there were there were um, two issues. You know, it's an opportunity for us to save ten thousand dollars and close out a collective bargaining agreement uh, in a manner that is beneficial to both sides. Um, uh, I don't think that um, we violated any of our process requirements. I think we're within compliance with notification. Um, you know, I think there were, you know, the situations like this do come up from time to time, but um, you know, there, if there's a lack of trust, I don't know uh, if extending another week or two or a month is really going to change that at all. Um, I do support the contract wholeheartedly. Um, I also support. Uh, I'd like to see actually higher wage increases. We talk about affordable housing and workforce housing. Um, you know, some of the lower end tier uh, officers coming in first year, second year are, are two times uh, minimum wage. Good luck making a living on that, folks. You know, live in Scarborough and do that? I don't think so. Um, so I'd like to see, uh, you know, uh, the ability to pay them to be able to stay in this community. Uh, so I support it wholeheartedly. I think the collective bargaining agreement uh, process is one that uh, you can't expect to get everything all at once. Uh, I think we have goals from appointments. The co appointments committee is aware of the contract. We've looked at the discussions from a strategic standpoint. We have a strategic vision of the direction we want to move in, um, but it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you can't expect to achieve everything with one contract cycle. I think uh, negotiating in good faith is critical. We, we expect the, the labor, to, uh, the union to negotiate in good faith, and we likewise have to do the same. And I think this is a, a, the desired outcome for both parties, and I wholly support the contract. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> and certainly the expedited nature <clears throat> uh, of this is not to any of our liking. <clears throat> uh, uh, however, union contracts have historically not involved the same sort of public comment as budgets. And uh, I really appreciate the way the town council dug in uh, and analyzed all the data that was pushed out in the last several days. So that was much appreciated. <clears throat> the public should certainly realize that we have a number of levels of oversight of the negotiating team. <clears throat> the town manager really tries to say separate uh, from the actual at the table negotiations. And he does that so that he can make hard calls as he did here uh, last Friday uh, 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 to put a number that was a countering number on the table that had uh, then was in staring down the union on a Monday vote. And they accepted that. And that was, I thought, good leadership. Uh, the Appointments and Negotiations Committee and Councillor Babine has, has really done a good job of, of formalizing the opportunity to provide council input before things get too far down the road. And that, uh, and we did have, last month, did meet with uh, Liam Gallagher uh, to, uh, to discuss this very topic. And then we have the town council, uh, which uh, you've got uh, some very smart people here who understand this. Uh, we have some people, like Councilor Hayes, who understand the insurance marketplace. So uh, we had the ability to analyze this problem, I think, on this more expedited schedule. Uh, I'm going to support this uh, because I really am convinced that uh, when you look at a baseline case of what has historically been uh, contracts, 2.5% uh, each year for three years, uh, this contract, when measured against that benchmark, is for all intents and purposes, results in the same numbers. Uh, it involves some uh, <coughs> uh, retirement issues that make it a little bit different. It involves some health insurance issues, which are always a problem for municipalities and private employers 
because of the uh, uh, rapid increase in the rate of uh, insurance uh, coverage. So I think that uh, uh, we, we got a very good result in that. I'm particularly impressed by the way the contract is structured. Uh, the contract uh, has a percentage increase for each year, uh, but what it does is it favors young, uh, new entry uh, uh, police officers uh, so that we are more competitive, and we had data that showed us that uh, this is an area where we needed to strengthen our relationship with uh, the union and the police department's uh, officers. And this contract does that. Uh, at, of course, at the, uh, at the high end of the scale, uh, uh, long-term employees, they get less of an increase as a percentage of their salaries. Uh, so that, uh, and, we, and we were in solid ground there. We were uh, uh, much higher than other communities at the high end but lower at the lower end. Uh, and so we're rectifying some issues within this. So when you look at a percentage, you go, well, that's, you know, sounds high. Well, you have to understand the nuances that go into the negotiating. And uh, the nuances in this case rectify some issues that we very much wanted to. Uh, uh, you cannot, as the chief said, it's very difficult to find police officers today. Uh, and uh, 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 we want to be able to have people join our force who are, who are top quality, first rate. Uh, and, uh, and that's becoming more and more difficult. So uh, this, uh, this new contract is definitely going to advance us in that regard. Um, good. So I think that's, uh, that's all I have. Uh, any further comments that anyone would like to make? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Unanimous. Order 1849, act on the request to approve for participation in Special Plan 3C for all current and future law enforcement uh, officers uh, for future service only. Service rendered prior to July 1, 2018 remains under Special Plan 1C. And I'd ask uh, Liam uh, Gallagher to explain to us so the revised agenda includes oh. one important oh. addition to that. And authorize the town manager to sign <laughs> any and all related documents. <clears throat> Liam, if you would uh, give us an introduction on this. Sure. Uh, so under the uh, proposed you. agreement that was just uh, approved by the council, uh, it does include that uh, retirement change from uh, Plan 1C. It's a special plan through the Main State Retirement System, uh, which is a 20-year, 50% of your average compensation, no age plan. <coughs> to a 25-year, uh, uh, 66 and two-thirds uh, benefit, no age plan. Um, again, this, uh, this change does generate uh, a reduction in the employer contribution. It does require an increased contribution from the employee, uh, but in, in their analysis, they advanced it because I think that the uh, majority of the officers see having a long and fruitful career here, which again, I think, uh, you know, if they were proposing to try to get out of the door earlier, uh, that might be more of a, a red flag for us, but they, I think, are, are happy here and they want to see a future here and they see a, a benefit to them. So this certainly was a win-win proposal, um, and this action before you is what's required to facilitate that change. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions for uh, Mr. Gallagher? Thank you, Liam. Uh, public comment. None. Accept the motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. I think we've probably talked this one through. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you.